And now for our weekly news segment. Unfortunately, Tony could not make it. So <laughs> we, we got to add a little penguin in there too, man. We gotta... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I guess he's in a different time zone, um, yeah. so it's also harder for him uh, to make this time. But um, let me go and share my screen. Let's do it. Can find the right window. Anybody else that wants to jump up? I don't know. Are there other people hanging out over here? Um, yeah, if you're in the backstage and you want to come on and you aren't just uh, mentioned so in the private chat. Uh, uh, right. yeah. So first, I, I didn't look over any of these, so uh, <laughs> these are all sent by Tony. <laughs> uh, so first one, we've got House Committee will reopen discussions on digital dollar in September 4th hearing. Following an August recess, members of the House Financial Services Committee will gather for a digital dollar dilemma hearing on September 14th. Uh-oh, sounds like CBDC. The U.S. House Financial Services Subcommittee on Digital Assets, Financial Technology, and Inclusion, that's weird, will be holding a hearing discussing central bank digital currencies for the first time in months. So they're going to start talking about it again. I was honestly expecting it to come a little bit sooner. Um, I guess it's lagging behind slightly, uh, but you know it's still coming, of course. All right. So Remember they're... during the 2008 collapse when they were like, "All right, we're gonna vote on a bailout," and then they voted no, and they're like, "Okay, everybody's gonna vote again until you get the right answer." It's the same thing. Everybody rejects <laughs> the CBDC, so like, "Oh, you just need to keep voting until we get the answer that we want." And you know, I know where your kids go to school or whatever. In a September 7th announcement, Republican lawmakers on the committee said they plan to hold a hearing discussing the implications of releasing a CBDC as well as private sector alternatives. The digital dollar dilemma discussion will be held on September 14th, roughly two weeks before the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Gary Gensler will testify before the full committee. Gary Gensler, the guy that was the guy who orchestrated the bank bailouts and then immediately became a government official and then immediately went and worked at the banks that got the free money. And it always went back like to the, that. It's the either the ball, the government ball. high in position that immediately to the company, uh, you know, in the private sector that they uh, did, you know, regulations for or against, or it's the opposite. It's like, it's it's how so many of these people are. Where do you guys see this going? I mean, there's there seems to be a lot of political will in the opposite direction against CBDCs, right? You have like these presidential candidates that have declared that they're against it. You have states taking action saying they're against it. I mean, uh, it doesn't seem like it's got a lot of popularity. I don't even know if Fed now is being used because that's technically out. Um, oh, I don't think I, I don't think it's a very it's not a very popular thing, but. We all know that the president and the governors and everybody talk one way and then our puppet strings can pull the other way. So they're going to do whatever they want. And we have no say about it anyway. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, is that even if like, oh, you know, we are not going to actively try to use FedNow or CBDC, right? Like if we if we see that, we're not going to use it. But that's why they're going to integrate it into things that people already use. Like Visa will probably integrate stuff like that into their systems. And banks like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they'll probably integrate Fed now into all that stuff. Um, so it's yeah, like we'll see. I do think there's, you know, there's there's powerful people on the other side though, right? There's those that want the CBDCs, uh, the Fed, but then, then there's also those that are going to be negatively affected about by it that are quite powerful as well, that are pushing in the other direction. So uh we shall see. We the shall truth see. is we just need yeah. to keep it from being a thing long enough for our own systems to be firmly rooted as an alternative. Because if you yeah. can draw the comparison, if you can point out like, hey, we have stuff that's free that doesn't require, you know, slave tactics and it already works, it, it creates even more resistance We've got, um, relating on the CBDC topic, digital euro can ward off many private payment service ills 
from ECB official. Private payment services gain a monopoly with no benefit to other market players or economic stability, ECB board member Fabio Panetta said. Um, the European Central already you is quite happy with the European Commission's legislative proposals for the digital euro. ECB executive board member Fabio Panetta. Committee on Ep Economic and Monetary Affairs at a speech on the 4th that the proposals put Europe at the forefront of advanced economies in central bank digital currency development, potentially mm -hmm. the dominance of the financial sector and the ills that apply. So they're basically saying, that's what it looks like, is that, oh, you know, we got too many uh, ways to pay, you know, maybe PayPal's and my cash app. You know, we're just going to take this all and turn it into one big thing that's like perfect. For everyone. Will you scroll well, back up to the top real quick? So private payment services can gain a monopoly with no benefit. Okay. And then the argument for a is Euro exactly is yeah. that they want the monopoly. The, <laughs> the government that already has the monopoly. Yeah, it's mm. pretty yeah, it's pretty goofy. Uh, and what's also interesting is just they're saying it is now up to legislators to ensure it would replicate key characteristics of cash in the digital sphere, particularly its privacy. Press so. X to doubt. You know that that meme, it's afraid from uh, what was that star? I forget the name, but it was one of those like space things. And at the end, it's afraid and they made a meme out of it. And it's just hilarious to me that they're just nakedly admitting of how afraid they are that the private alternatives could gain a monopoly because the powers that be see that it could easily, you know, upset the apple cart of the financial system if people were to catch on to just how amazing things like Monero actually are. They're saying the euro system would be unable to see the personal details of digital euro users or connect any payment information to private individuals. Sure, they wouldn't. Intermediaries <laughs> would only see the user information needed for onboarding and compliance with existing regulation. So in other words, everything. Right. So somehow it's, it's going to be private, but it's going to be aligned with all the current regulations we have, which requires KYC and all that jazz. So not exactly sure how they're going to do that. Um, furthermore, but this is interesting. They're saying, furthermore, the possibility to pay offline would, be provide, would provide cash like privacy with neither the intermediary nor the central bank processing the payment. So they're talking about some kind of like offline bearer instrument type thing um, that would allow people to transact peer to peer in a digital way. I mean, we, we've seen proposals for this, but this is interesting that they're bringing this. It is up. actually kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I guess that you know that would kind of have to be like device to device, wouldn't be you know yeah, a mesh network. Yes, yeah, some kind of thing like that. Uh, yeah, so. All the same stuff. They want to introduce CBDCs, but somehow keep it private. And uh, people, I guess, don't trust their intentions. It's it's no. private and anonymous unless you're a bad guy. And then you can get your information. You can pay with Monero offline easily. Just take one of those, like, you know, those those physical Bitcoins that they used to have, like the little things. Yeah. And yeah. you could and Chips. you could like load it with like. Like it would load with like zero point one Bitcoin or whatever, and then you, as long as the private key was intact, you knew that it hadn't been spent. That's mm -hmm. the that's the way to pay with Monero offline. You just make Monero bills kind of like gold back, and have like denominations of zero point one Monero or one Monero or whatever. And then as long as the private key is intact on the bill without being, you know, disturbed or whatever, then you can you can know that it's it's intact and fine. Yep, one hundred percent. All right, uh, I guess next story. Next, we've got some updates to Cake Wallet. Um, and I talked about some of this on the Monero Minute. Um, we now have Monero coin control, which is pretty cool. Obviously not really needed for privacy in Monero, but it's nice that you have that option. Uh, you have auto sub address. So every time you receive uh, some transaction on a Monero sub address, Cake Wallet can... Uh, auto create a new one every time you uh, tap the receive button and they have some new 
themes. They have some cool dark themes, a Monero orange theme. Uh, very nice. So update your Cake wallet if you haven't already. Uh, and they have a in-app live chat support um, if you need that. They managed to fit a tiny person inside Cake wallet. I'm very impressed. Uh, <laughs> next, we've got uh, this tweet, which uh, is a very large meme. Uh, the security budget issue and the Bitcoin laser eyes totally ignoring it or calling it an attack. I think that, yeah, this is all about people's different reactions in Bitcoin to the 21 mil cap. Oh, yeah. The security hole. Yeah, Definitely a big topic this week coming up a lot. What 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 are people thinking about it? What do you guys think about it? Last game now. What do you think? You think there's going to be some kind of action that takes place in Bitcoin to uh, add a tail mission or something? You, think well, that's you know, one of the things that Body pointed out is, you know, the the hash rate power question is. I remember what you know way back, like seven months ago or whatever, which is you know nine hundred years in crypto land. People talking about how there might be a security issue in some far, far away date, you know, when it was like 70,000 was the price of the Bitcoin. And then I remember uh, at Monerotopia, um, I don't know why I can never remember his name, but the guy that was talking about adding tail emission to Bitcoin because Peter Todd, uh, Peter Todd, yeah, Peter Todd um, you know, and he said, yeah, we might be looking at needing something like this by, you know, 2026, 2027 or whatever. And now here it is where it's already too expensive to mine Bitcoin and be profitable. It's already too expensive to secure the network. And now they're plugging holes with stuff that has literally nothing to do with being digital cash. It's like, oh, we'll have all of these, you know, the, these, uh, what do they call them? I can't even remember the name of it or whatever. But uh, like drive chains. Like, well, not just the side chain question, but uh, it's it's where you mint a coin with a transaction that is unique and it you know has oh, extra NFT? data on it. Ordinals. Ordin ordinals, yeah, yeah. So they're they're literally powering their network with ordinals, which adds another issue of security. It makes another identifiable feature to whatever it is that you're transacting and we know that even though the transaction rate has stayed relatively close to the same an ever increasing amount of the transactions on the bitcoin network are now overtly unique and that's the selling point is that they're unique and identifiable and it and it's just like at some point the the delusional nature of these people saying oh bitcoin can be this has to collapse because they're they're literally now minting transactions that are unique and identifiable on purpose to support a collapsing price that doesn't pay the hash rate it's, uh, it, it already has failed and they were saying oh it might fail in 20 years it might fail in 30 years and it took a halving of the price and ordinals for this to even be something that they talk about now. Meanwhile, all of these other people who are way more humble about the capacity of their pet projects, such as Monero, had been working on solving these problems way in advance and have solutions way in advance. And now we're working with the whole Seraphis thing to solve way future problems in advance as well. I just find it absolutely amazing that so many people still refuse to talk about something that is already a gigantic problem. What do you think is the likelihood that they try to add a tail emission at some point? Is it a complete non-starter? Will there be some, some fork? Will there be some tail emission version of Bitcoin? Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right. They've been they, their Their sales pitch has always been there will only be 21 million. Their sales pitch has always been our code never changes. Look at all of these other projects that are always changing their code. Their sales pitch has has always been the strength and the reliability of the network. And so now anybody who, you know, had their toes in the water or whatever and set such an expectation 
are going to it's it will be a, a very disenfranchising experience for people who got behind the rallying cry of Bitcoin's immutability and Bitcoin's ability to hold value and Bitcoin's privacy when they have to admit that they sacrificed privacy, that they sacrificed the, the fixed coin count in order to protect the network. Um, and, you know, that was one of the reasons why, because I've been watching this for a long time, there was a lot of people that were developers on Bitcoin back in, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016, that they abandoned ship before Monero was the project and they were looking for something like Monero. And now they are on Monero and they've, you know, they've already dealt with the ethical question. So the people who didn't are just rapidly losing their ability to even advocate for their favorite coin, you know? Yeah, they can, they box themselves into a corner. It's like, uh, the, the 21 million meme, I mean, the, the lack of understanding there, the amount of people, it's, it's, it's just such an easy sales pitch. Uh, but it's really fooled so many people into thinking that that is the value of Bitcoin is that it's capped at 21 mil. Uh, and then for them to then realize that it's not so much what the number is or that it's capped, but that the supply is predictable. Um, there just seems to be a huge disconnect there. Like if, uh, That fooled me for a very long time too, where I was like, okay, the supply is capped. So we'll always know how many Bitcoin there are at what time. Right. And I didn't even consider the inflation issue where like the miners won't be the miners won't be incentivized to mine because there won't be enough transactions on the network to sustain them. It didn't even cross my mind for a long time. What what eventually opened up your mind to it? Uh, the block wars of 2017 when uh, when things hit fifty dollars a transaction. I was like, this is this is ridiculous. <laughs> because there's not enough block space and therefore the, the fees went way the heck uh, above what you could pay. I mean, paying five, paying $50 for a $5 coffee. No, people aren't going to do that. There's such a huge ethical concern with this too. Uh, honestly, that guy that was on earlier, Michael 10 is pretty well versed in this, but a lot of people don't realize that, the strongest argument for the open source crypto community in general is the fact that the unbanked can have just as many rights and privileges and freedoms as the rest of the world. But it hinges on the transaction fees being like really, really, really low, like unnoticeably low, like the way that Bitcoin Cash and Monero do. Um, because when you're trying to trade value at a very small scale so that you can come up, so that you can eat, so that you can do these things, you know, in the first world, people just think of it like, oh, there was a $3 transaction fee on this visa and our margins are 40%. We'll just eat the loss or whatever. But in places that have way less economic freedom, you know, even like a two or three penny transaction fee can sink or swim like whether or not your business is going to be functional um and when and when these bitcoin people just keep oh, oh well we have the lightning network it's well it's not like you just open up a lightning node and everything runs all hunky-dory now you've just locked away a massive amount of capital that you might need to run the business or it and it, 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 these people who stand on their economic literacy, who are trying to defend Bitcoin, are actually just showing how naked they really are when they say, oh, the solution to high transaction fees is to lock your capital in a black box on somebody else's computer for a decade. You know? <laughs> uh, for a little head said, uh, what's the live chat for, chat with whom? I think he's talking about the cake wallet um that's probably for support for uh for yeah it's just like live support for um for people who are having trouble with the uh the app is it just cake a, is it just cake wallet that got an update or is it monero.com as well because i'm using the um I'm using oh yes their... no yeah sorry it's cake and monero.com okay because i'm using their Asteroid repository i added it to my my droidify and i have not seen an update yet for those two 
because I'm using the Monero.com wallet. Yeah, I think they I've just had a lot came out, so you Monero might have to wait for it to get built since um, they probably have their own build system for the... Since I think it's their own F-Droid repository. Yeah, it is their own F-Droid. Okay. Yeah, you should get an update for that. Um, but yeah, it should be in a way that's private because, uh, I mean, Cake is, you know, they're, they're for the privacy of Monero stuff. But it's like they design it in a way to where it's like the kind of app you would recommend if you're trying to get your mom into crypto. So they want to make it as easy uh, for newcomers to uh, come on if they need help. Well, they got the, the, the live support built in, which is that's pretty good for, for new people. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, next, we have very happy uh, to be the first to have a Monero signer after meeting in person with Monero time. Can't wait to use it to sign offline on Monero transactions. Excellent product and irreproachable tops with quality. So Monero time um, has been working on this cool offline signer hardware for a little while now. And he made this post earlier this week cool. um, that he's finished machining boxes and he's now getting ready for assembly operations uh, which is pretty awesome. How, so how is, how is this thing going to work? Do we, do, you, do we know? Uh, I didn't look in any details. Okay. Um, but he has a video of... Uh, yeah, we're hoping maybe he'll jump on next week. That, yeah, yeah, that would be uh, that'd be cool. And then he can actually talk about it and show it off. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah. I, idea being you could, you could sign your Monero transactions with this device that holds your private key on it. Yeah, basically, and this would be uh, this would be like an offline device. Um, yeah, uh, and it's like hardware. Um, but next we have privacy coins will be outlawed and delisted from all exchanges for Europe. It starts now. So I think this is uh, continuing from the ban that happened was that like a month ago for a few countries. And now it's all of Europe is my understanding, or all of Europe now, any country is part of the EU. Uh, it is now not allowed to sell these privacy coins on centralized exchanges. Is that what's actually happening, or is it just Binance that's doing this? I don't think it's right. I don't think we're at that point yet, where actually there's this one says Belgium specifically. Um, I. Yeah, but I think it's just Binance taking action, right? I don't think there's an there's any actual law regulation mandating that privacy coins are you know can't be provided on centralized exchanges yet. I don't, I don't think so. I'll have to look into that because I'm not 100 percent sure either. I saw a few tweets about this, like not just this one, um, but I didn't really uh, I didn't really look at it too much. Um, it could be preemptive, like you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it seems like it's a sign of things to come. Uh, Binance just jumping out ahead. I don't know if anybody has any, like, more detailed information on that or ideas on where this is actually headed in Europe. I really wish Body could chime in on uh, an interesting thought experiment about... Uh, so, if all of these people have, in fact... Uh, fractionally reserved XMR, as many of us have theorized, right? And they have to redeem all of this value. If they could use it as cover to redeem that value in a different crypto or even in fiat, now that they've leveraged up, uh, you know, all of these holdings and gained as much as they have on both the up and the down, if they would have to pay out XMR in the local fiat at a one-to-one, -one, and then they could simultaneously suppress the price of XMR long enough for that number to go down and cover their fractional reserve losses. Um, so basically, they levered up, and then they pushed the price down, and then they did fractional reserve on selling XMR, and now they can get out of the fact that they don't even have it. By paying out with the money they gained on the levered on the <laughs> levered purchases, um, it's so. In other words, I would think that the uh, crypto exchanges would have. Uh, I, I, oh, here he is! I gotta hear it. Come on, man. Well, before I say anything, I'll just show this article real quick that I found. Uh, that yes, I guess I was reading into that tweet too much. Um, Binance continues European clampdown. Privacy coins are listed in Belgium. 
uh, as a response to local regulations. So this yeah, is that seems like them. it would actually add cre add credibility to what I was just saying there. But let's hear it, body. Come on, you got to have something. To... <laughs> uh, my working theory at the moment is that I I think that um, the Monero miner that they're trying to sell now they've been using this for maybe the last year. Uh, at least six months. And I think that's how they covered their lies at this moment, um, Binance and Bitmain. Um, they basically created this miner. They mined at a loss um, so that they could meet their withdrawal demand uh, without looking you know, like they had fractionally reserved. Um, it's, it's, it's not a good situation, right? It's, it's, it's really not. Um, it seems like they're going to get away with it. So uh, I just feel like that's something that uh, we kind of have to accept at this moment. Um, they they were able to to suppress the price. They were able to fractionally reserve, and then at the end of the day, they were able to get away with it. Um, but at the same time, we have a lot of organic uh, usage and organic demand. I don't think they're going to be able to cap it uh, like they did in the next bull market. I don't think they're going to be able to cap an arrow like they did in the last bull market. That might be why they're bailing too, because they know that if they kept trying to dump all of this other money into suppressing the price of Monero they're going to get wrecked. And so they, this might be why the exit strategy is coming now at a time where you would think that they would want to rise, they would want to ride the next price pump. Because if they know that the, the, this price suppression is going to be alleviated, you know, you would think that they would want to ride it unless they're holding a, a negative balance, in which case they have to get out as fast as they can. So people who have held their Monero would probably be really richly rewarded when all of this takes place over the next, uh, probably it'll take like eight months for all of this to unwind. So there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of dirty deals happening in the background between the deep state, between Binance, um, I, I think that the, the whole arena is just dirty as fuck. Um, I do think that Tether probably operates with, with a bit of a nod from the deep state, a tacit nod from the deep state. Um, and I think that I think that Binance, I mean, uh, you've seen the picture of CZ next to um, uh, Bloomberg, right? So he, he that was his boss. Like, Bloomberg was his boss uh, formerly. So I... Um, I, I honestly, like, if I, I have to be really honest with you guys, I don't see massive price pumps in Monero's future. Um, I think these guys are treading water. They've they've managed to get just enough Monero to, to cover their books, um, to stop appearing, you know, as, as bad as they looked for all of 2022. Um, I uh, I mean, I overall, like, it's we, we just have to fucking use Monero. We have to we have to create circular economies. Um, kind of on the side, right? Like that's that's the only thing that's going to win this game over the long term. So we can't depend on Binance. We can't depend on, um, on on anyone to pump our bags. We have to actually use this thing. And, we and can't before you sell your Monero on these exchanges, hit up the community. There are people 100%. in the community that I have offered to mail well, well, I'll just leave things alone at there. But there are ways for people to pay you for your Monero in this community that would be more than happy to give you an excellent price on your Monero if you do not use the exchanges. Never put back into the exchange because you're creating the um, uh, that attack, that specific... Um, Eve Alice Eve attack. Yeah, Alice yeah, Eve a... attack. And another thing is that you can't de that's a very you can't depend on the you can't peg Monero to the the price of a fiat because that's just wrong. Like it's wrong to do when you find price organically with Monero and you say, okay, I'm going to charge fifty Milanero for a cheeseburger, and somebody else and somebody comes up to you and it's like. No, I don't want to pay fifty millionero for a cheeseburger. I'll pay you forty, and you're like, mm, no, that's a little bit too low, forty-five. And they're like, okay, that'll work. So you get a price that you're you're comfortable with. They get a price they're comfortable with, and the price discovery happens in Monero, completely leaving out the old fiat system, and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's what I've noticed a lot on um, Monero market and. Um coming to XMR Bazaar is that you'll be able to 
to be able to price things in Monero, like itself. Um, and I see this a lot more in Monero marketing now, where things are priced directly in Monero. Uh, so, and they're, you know, the price, the price probably starts at what they think it's valued for USD. Um, but depending on the value of Monero, that price will either, the USD value will up and down. Um, which is which is cool to see people starting to try and make Monero be its its own actual currency, not just relying on the USD to price everything. The way I see it is start a start a small business and sell something, and then maybe maybe like once a week or something like that, up update the price with like the five day moving average or something like that. That way you get a a decent price, but it's not directly influenced by the the movements, the hourly second movements or whatever. Hey, do we have that tweet where uh, that maximalist was complaining about BISC uh, <laughs> having Monero on it and not realizing that like Monero is ninety percent of that volume? That was uh, that was special. Oh, okay. of um, people being able to uh, buy Monero on BISC. I didn't see that tweet. It, it was um, it was some maximalist because I know they Twitter, use uh, like... Bitcoin for the. Um... He he was complaining that that BISC is like is integrating shit coins. He's like, why Why do you have the shit coin Monero on BISC? Is this, this should be what, a what else exchange. should you use BISC for, if not the trade for... Like, I mean, it's 90% kind of, of the kind of volume is, is XMR. Yeah. Baldi, what, what do you... I mean, I, I think we've you've been asked this numerous times and probably brought it up in the uh, in your price report. But what do you think is going to be the result of Monero being banned in Europe, let's say. I mean, we're, we're starting to see see it taking place, but if tomorrow we woke up and it's like legitimately banned, there's no way to purchase Monero on any centralized exchanges in Europe. What do you Good. think is the result of that? Great. Um, no, I, think, I, I think it's great too, right? We're building the uh, the parallel economy outside the system. But what do you think will be the, the effect on the ecosystem on the price i think we're going to go to court if they if they actually try to ban monero i think we're going to end up going to court at some point um because for all the same reasons that publishing messages is fundamentally allowed um and why bitcoin is fundamentally legal that's it's all the same reasons why monero is fundamentally legal so if and the government's probably smart enough to only ban it at the exchange at the corporate level. They're probably not going to criminalize it. Um, right. They know that. Yeah, hey, let's talk about yeah, scenario one, right? So they, they don't ban Monero per se. They they just make it difficult. To, to um, no exchange wants to deal with the risk of listing Monero. And now Monero is no longer listed on any centralized exchanges. Do you think that... I used to cry about it. Like, no, they're not going to ban Monero. It's... They're not going to take it off the exchange. And now I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Take, take do it off it. the exchange. Like, Binance needs to drop it involved. already. I'm going to arbitrage it, and I'm going to sell my Monero to the Europeans and get um, and get a higher price for it because uh, I'll have mined it. So I'll get a higher price for it, and then I'll come back to the U.S. where I can buy some more on the exchanges and buy it. <laughs> Is that how you see things playing out, guys? And buddy, like, do you see? Will there be a drop in price? Does always going to be a drop in liquidity, right? I mean, but will there nah. be a drop in price? Now, Monero has has an organic floor on price right now. Like, uh, I'm not saying that we won't go lower. I'm just saying that, in general, Monero has had to earn its spot and earn its price every step of the way because um, people have been uh, trying to attack that. So our our price has a genuine floor. Hypothetically, like, okay, so we talk about the 2017 fork um, that. The B cashers airdropped exactly the people that would that could sell their price down into obscurity. Um, hypothetically, those same people, if they wanted to, could also sell Bitcoin's price down to, to Bitcoin Cash current level. Not quite, but close. Um, so um, Monero has earned its spot and earned its price every step of the way. So if they ban it, it, it doesn't matter. Like it's 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 almost irrelevant at this moment. Right, there's not much speculation. I mean, all those uh, those EU country bans uh, that didn't really do anything to the price, did it? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I so mean, far, we, we fought all the battles. We yeah. had to deal with all that in 2020 and 2021. Um, so we've, I mean, we we're over it. Like basically, Monero as a community is over it at this point. Yeah, it seems to be valued into the price. Um. All right. Next story. What do we got here? This is oh, from okay. you. 
Oh, right. This was in reaction to, I don't know if you guys saw this. There was a paper that came out, blockchain privacy and regulatory compliance towards a practical equilibrium. Vitalik was one of the authors, among others. Basically, they're proposing something similar to Tornado Cash, uh, but done in a way where they're pri- they're called private. They're calling them privacy pools, uh, but the, it's built in a way where uh, people can, the users can, essentially comply with local regulations by proving that while they may be mixing their coins in a tornado cash like manner they're proving that they haven't mixed it with anybody who uh may be undesirable in the eyes of the <laughs> fuck the regulation <laughs> this is so goofy this so is- maybe maybe we could come up with like a view key. key for example like if somebody had some idea uh, for yes. like a view key and they could implement something like that we should get the developers on a view key immediately. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you what do you guys think of this? I mean, it's being proposed. Obviously, I see it as kind of being guilty until proven innocent, right? Um, where now everybody has to essentially prove their innocence whenever they're trying to obtain privacy and have to show that they did not, in fact, mix their funds with anybody undesirable. Um, but there, you know, there's arguments being made, right? That this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It will get more people using a privacy tool. They're, they're, do, they're revealing, uh, complying using these zero knowledge proofs. Uh, it's not a view key. Some people are arguing maybe it's maybe it's better than a view key because now you're selectively revealing yourself. What are, what are people's thoughts on this? Just use Monero. It's interesting, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> get, let's All get back to brass packs. Going you know. to these super, uh, very subpar uh, projects for privacy uh, that end up just trying to bootlick to uh, fit into the whole. Uh, uh, you know, we gotta we gotta be compliant. You know, in like yeah, there were issues with tor- Tornado Cash and how they're running it. Um, that got them in trouble. It's not just the privacy part, but it's just like why. Yeah, I interviewed somebody this week uh, on on this topic. He sees it as, you know, compliance is just completely antithetical to what privacy is intending to be. And I I, I tend to agree with him on that. I I I don't see how you could have it both ways, right? And why would you comply with the thugs Mm -hmm. that are threatening you anyway? (laughs) <laughs> right they're they're potentially one of one of the criminals we have to worry about right so it's why mm-hmm. why are we creating a tech that then gives them this this power into, into i feel like tech. mixing mixing is inherently something that tends to bifurcate the network you'll end up in a situation where there's um approved ethereum and where there's bad ethereum or or and or bitcoin same thing and it's it's just inherently not a good idea. Like you're bifurcating the money in a way that makes it less usable. Um, and I understand that you know we we want to make tools not able to be used by bad guys, but inherently we we really like it needs to be neutral. It needs to be fully neutral. And what's happening here? If this thing, I mean, zk is really cool as a, as a technology. Like I think it's very interesting. Um, like the the technology that they're releasing here. Nevertheless, it's uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to go in any good direction. Like that's not a good thing for the world. That's not a good thing for freedom. There are right. just there are just bad people in the world. You cannot stop a bad person from using a technology. A bad person is going to uh, do terrorism financing, whether it be through Monero, whether it be through some sort of privacy tornado cash type thing. Somebody could get in a car and run people over. Like you cannot stop bad people from doing bad things. It's impossible. Right, I think, and, and and who's going to be this the arbiter of of who decides what's good and bad? Right, I mean that's obvious. That's the ultimate issue here. Is that we're, we're we're back to square one where we have the government deciding what's good and bad, creating a scenario where one day what's labeled as a terrorist group might right now be considered just some political entity that has opinions that disagree with the powers that be, but uh, you know so many years from now they may be labeled as an extreme terrorist group to the point where if they're seen using a system like this that they're you know 
uh, they'll they'll be they'll be they'll be censored, right? I think that, that that's that's yeah, like the, 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 like the, the ADF in Germany. The tool no longer then works as a censorship resistant, uh, you know, free speech money tool. It just no longer has. Don't that. compromise on your privacy or yeah. security. Use Monero. So. Hmm. Interesting. Break free from the oh, control. Conveniently, why not just use Monero? Is what the anti drive people, anti drive chain people have to say over and over. Bye. Yeah, this, this is interesting. So you got drive trains being proposed as the way to have quote unquote shit coins on Bitcoin, right? Uh, and some people are just saying, you know, you can just. Like for example, they're saying you know, you'll be able to I use something like, coin, like right? making Monero, right, via via Bitcoin through a drive train. Um, and the anti drive train people are saying, why not just use Monero? Which is, which is pretty funny to see. I don't I don't fully understand um, why there's a push for drive chains. They can already do sovereign rollups in the in the inscription data. Like you can already make a side chain. The only reason why you would have a drive chain is because they've got this um, blind merge mining. So you can peg in and peg out of the drive chain directly connected to the Bitcoin mining um, like uh, verification. But I mean, if you're going to shit coin, do you, like, do you really care that much about the peg? Like, do you really need to change um, Bitcoin's mining ecosystem in potentially unpredictable ways? Just just make sovereign rollups in the inscription data and run your side chain that way. Like. Uh, and, and by the way, if there was any demand for for that, they, they, it would already it already exists. So drive chains are never like BIP three hundred is not going to get approved. It's just like there, there's no consensus for it, and it's a dumb idea. Anyways, just use the sovereign rollup in the inscription data. Now this guy who's tweeted, well, what's his name? If you go back, what's his uh, his handle? He's the Nostra guy, right? He's all, I think he's he's also the guy that said we need to like kill off Monero, right? Wasn't he saying like we need to? Uh, he wanted to attack Monero. With miners. Yeah, he uh, he recommended that if anyone had funds, uh, that the best thing for Bitcoin would be to attack Monero. And it's kind of funny. He said the silent part out loud. <laughs> and now, now he's seeing those that. I guess, so he's he's pro drive drive chains, I assume. Right? And now he's seeing those that are oh, against. I, don't know. I haven't. I haven't yeah, really that fiat, opposed, fiat opposed fiat to drive chains are saying we don't need them. Just use Monero, which is just tearing the soul apart. Thanks for the free pen testing. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. What else we got here? What is this? Sorry, oh. my mic was muted. And speaking from trying to ban everybody from doing something is, you know, not going to prevent criminals from doing it. The governor of New Mexico has just declared a First and Second Amendment does not exist due to an emergency under this legal authority theory, all of our rights are essentially eliminated. Watch the most evil and tyrannical 60 seconds you've ever heard. Of <laughs> oh, hold on. I got to do the whole thing with Jigger so I can share audio. I got to share the tab specifically. There we go. Oh, yeah. You took but your vote. point is valid. You took an oath to the Constitution. Isn't it unconstitutional to say you cannot exercise your, your carrying license? With one exception. Can you raise the volume? That is... If there's an emergency, and I've declared an emergency for a temporary amount of time, I can invoke additional powers. No constitutional right, in my view, including my oath, is intended to be absolute. There are restrictions on free speech. There are restrictions on my freedoms. In this emergency, this 11-year-old and all these parents who have lost all these children, they deserve my attention to have the debate about whether or not in an emergency we can create a safer environment. Because what about their constitutional rights? I took an oath to uphold those two. And if we ignore this growing problem without being bold, I've said to every other New Mexican, your rights are subrogated to theirs. And they are not, in my view. Uh, wait a minute, now. you're talking about crimes. There, there are already laws against the crimes, so how are there right? But, but again, if I'm unsafe, this woman doesn't know what the I'm Constitution is. For that, right? Absolutely insufferable. So <laughs> <laughs> so 
So what is he even saying about, uh, oh, i got to protect the, the children's constitutional rights, too, in terms of, like, we need to ban guns. Safety is not a constitutional Safety from the government is not constitutional. So all we have to do, all we have to do to have a nice dicta a nice dictatorship, is ban or declare an emergency that says that you can't uh, can't have freedom of speech and can't have freedom of firearms, and then have uh, elect a dictator and no one can do anything about it. Hey, I mean the federal government was trying to do that with you know. COVID. She even has the Karen haircut and the rat face. Like you could not be a more living meme. Of like the can I see your manager lady, and she's got like the two thug people next to her, like and even yeah, so the guy in the badge is just like I can't believe she just said this out loud. Basically, Dude, the guy um, left. He's like he's sitting there. He's like, what the fuck did she just say? Oh my god! Like you can just see it in his face. Hold on, let me pull up another tweet uh, if I can find it. Um, yeah, concept context to that is that um, they basically. Did a uh, yeah, yeah like an emergency um, act and banned public carrying uh, open and concealed carry of firearms, uh, which is like insane. Um, I'm trying to find the other tweet because this, yeah, this this story really plays into what we were just talking about too, with trying to create a compliance friendly, you know, privacy coin or privacy tech, right? Because the problem is you're gonna have some government entity changes the rules on you uh, for the purposes of quote unquote the better the, you know the greater good uh, where they're just going to adjust things at will and now you're you're being forced to comply to some new rule that uh, you know helps the government and hinder, and hinders some certain subset of people. I mean, she's, nah. she's, what she's, is I that really cool she's graphic wearing? Today. But they're doing it for the greater good. They're doing it to to help to help the kids, like like she's saying, right? Like they're doing. She's doing it to protect the, the children's rights. And Zoom they, in on that necklace. In those quick. instances, we can tear up the constitution. I saw a really cool graphic the other day that showed um, the right to carry a firearm in in various states over the course of time for like the last fifty years, and it's the the trend is obvious. It's very clear. All states, or for the most part, most states are um, are enshrining your right to protect yourself to carry a firearm, open and closed, without without a license. Um, I mean, it's like, are you allowed to learn karate? <laughs> you know, it, it's a, it's the same kind of question. You have the right to defend yourself, and particularly and especially, we need to defend ourselves from the government. They're, they're the worst. They're the worst gang. They're the worst criminals. The only reason why we even still have freedom, I think, is because the United States has enshrined the right for the people to be armed. Without that, they wouldn't have stopped with COVID. They would they would have done anything and everything that you think they wanted to do. It's only because we have guns that these people are not uh, are, are not dominating us right now. Yeah, so they suspended hey, uh, Second Amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to go. But yeah, thank you so much for having me on. And I'm loving the conversation. And I'm learn learning a lot from you guys. My son wants to say hi real quick. Hold on. He loves your music. <laughs> go ahead, David. <laughs> say hi. Hi. <laughs> this kid hey, what's up? to your stuff all the time. He loves you. Go ahead. Oh, man. Is, Love man. you too, man. <laughs> say, <laughs> bye, willpower. All right, Will Power. Thanks for jumping on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. much where, where, where can people uh, just throw out some information where people can find the the new album, all that, anything you want to put put out there? Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, go to willpowerstudios.com. Willpowerstudios.com. And you'll find everything you need right there. And if you want to support with the band camp, um, it's willpower-music.com. And you'll see my Monero XMR address also on the website if you want to support that way. So, yeah, bang the music, share it with the world, and listen to it and see if you like it. Thanks a and lot. Pay, and pay me in Monero. On. And pay me in Monero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. All right. Have a good one. Cheers. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. The funniest part of this whole thing, you know that the goons sitting next to her are like totally armed, like completely armed.
Uh, I wonder if these people just. I wonder if these people realize just how vulnerable they would be if all the people that protect them just decided to stop. Like these people are so upset about guns, and yet all their aides have guns. Their bodyguards have guns. Everybody around them has guns. Imagine just if all these people just decided, you know what the heck with it, I'm not guarding this person. If the cops would actually uphold the Constitution, then they would, you know, they should, she should probably be arrested. Um, well, definitely be arrested, but of course they don't either. And she's certainly not. Nobody it does. It wasn't that long ago that a statement like that would have been considered treason and that uh, that's a high crime. Oh, what she's saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we'll see what happens with that. I think uh, we have got one more. Oh, yes. This is pretty cool. On a, To end on a happier note, uh, Coin Cards released their volume breakdown for August of 2023 and XMR is all the way up to 35% just clipping the 36 and a half or 36.72% of Bitcoin. This is global, by the way. They stopped doing the uh, per country breakdown, unfortunately, because uh, I guess it was a lot for them to do. Um, but Monero has shot up like, uh, like over 3% uh, for coin cards globally. And it it's, went from it's 31 to 35. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then before that, it was like 23. So it's gained traction. Um, I bet some of that was due to uh, CakePay, unfortunately, shutting down, uh, which CakePay is back up now uh, for the web version. You can't do the mobile version. You have to uh, sign up for a wait list. Um, they haven't fully opened it yet. But yeah, Monero usage is quite, uh, is quite high on coin cards. Remember when Dash used to be like a huge, like actually used currency and it would have been way higher on this chart. And now it's like below 1%. God, use Lightning Network. It's their Lightning. Instamine. They, they, they really they, um, shot themselves in the foot when they said they're, they're not a privacy coin anymore. Like, oh, was, Dash. You know, oh, they never they were, were, but when they finally were like, <laughs> we just let everybody know. Please don't they delist. They managed to get the worst privacy. of all positions. Yeah. The women start that. stamping their boot a little bit. Oh, no, we're, 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 we're a privacy coin now. Hey, can, can we give a shout out here to Lightning Network at 1.29%? Bro, that's what I'm saying, man. 1.29%. All the uh, adoption. Dude, they were higher before. <sighs> They'll get to those bugs in like nine or ten years, guys. We promise. <laughs> wow. Yep. That, that's hashtag. really, really high usage on that lightning network. It was hashtag 18 I mean, months, but I think they're having to go like hashtag one decade to Is that how little get people that use lightning? Because like I've actually never used lightning myself. Um to, I've never been interested in it. I, I, I want to check it out just so I understand how it works at some point. But, like, is this realistic? Like, do people really just not use Lightning and people actually, like, just mostly use on-chain Bitcoin if you're using Bitcoin? Well, I mean, think about what Lightning actually is. Like, I don't know if you'll ever want to use it just to yeah, try it even because it's... Yes. Well, another, if, another thing If Bitcoin is, would seems... just raise the block size, I'd onboard to Lightning. I, I really would. Um, the numbers don't work out right now, but if they just raise the block size to, say, mm. 4 megabytes, those numbers could work. Even though it's problematic and it's not ideal, I would still get onto Lightning because I, I think it's better than, I mean, Fiat, obviously. Pete, Peter Todd forced me to use it to pay him for Monerotopia for his reimbursement. And it was a freaking pain in the ass because I had to onboard to it. And you had to do um, Sparrow Wallet. Of stuff up, right? Yeah. Like and, connection and, and well, it's, it's, downloading Sparrow Wallet, whatever, wasn't too bad. But I ended up paying like seven dollars in fees just to send my Bitcoin initially <laughs> into Lightning, right? And then the Lightning fee itself was more than the Monero fee at the time. So I was like, "What?" Why I'm like, "Just use Fixed Float. You, you could send him Lightning via Fixed Float. You never have to create a Lightning channel." Yeah, I think there are people he, that he were yelling at you for that, which is hilarious because oh, okay. that's not proving that Lightning is good or anything. You're like, "Oh, you <laughs> this conversion thing, blah blah blah." It's yeah, like, my experience was like I oh. you used it legit and it was yeah. terrible. Yeah, like just accept Monero, man. I am, I'm impressed how many people do still use Bitcoin on chain though, because like 
Eat, like you're just eating fees, man. To be fair though, how easy that is it to get on board with Lightning Network? Because I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, I'm used to like Polygon and Ethereum, where like they're different tokens. Where Ethereum is one token and Polygon is a different token on a side chain. But with Bitcoin, Bitcoin and Bitcoin Lightning all use the same addresses, and they don't have any difference in the wallet, from what I can tell. So it's really complicated to even get into Lightning for somebody who doesn't quite understand it. Yeah. You know, I, I was, uh, I was working and I had a pickup at a Costco and a guy saw my Monero shirt and he's like, let me get some. He opens his wallet. He has $2 in cash. He's like, I want to buy some Monero right now. And I was like, this is Monero.com wallet. Download it. He downloads it. Takes like not even two minutes. I was like, all right, now send me, uh, write down all of these words. He writes down all the words. I was like, all right, give me that cash. And then, but he turns around and he's like, okay, what do I do? I was like, let me just uh, scan that QR code and you're paid. He's like, that's it? How much did it cost me? Less than a penny. <laughs> this is great. Like that, that's, that's the entire onboard process every time. Just like, you know, a couple minutes of downloading a wallet and that's, that's it. Now compare that to all of the different versions of using the Lightning Network and making sure on the other side a person can even collect the money on the Lightning Network. And then it's it's so antithetical to the general way that open source software should work that and like, I just I can't do it, man. Guys, just and use like how, Wallet of Satoshi. And like how are you supposed to know if somebody's even on the Lightning Network? Because the coin addresses for main chain and the coin addresses for Lightning are the same from what I understand. So if I send you a lightning payment and you're not on the lightning network, what the heck happens to the coins? Well, I thought they, Body, you want to say something on that? I thought. They uh, sure. Good. So, uh, like to to be technical about that, um, in order to receive a payment from Lightning, you have to generate a preimage and uh, like basically you have to generate the transaction as the receiver and then send that to um to the person that would send you funds. Um, so yeah, there's there's no way to to actually like donate or send you funds unless you're actually online because um, it's like it's a dynamic process, um, oh, okay. which is why Monero is just it's great. Monero is That's wonderful for retarded. donations do and for receiving that? money. That was an another part of the experience with Peter Todd. He sent me an invoice to get paid, and then the invoice expired because I took a couple <laughs> like I like you know walked away from it. I was doing other stuff, and I'm like, all right, finally, let me go do this lightning thing. And I go to pay, and the invoice was expired. He had to send me another invoice. I was like, well, are you kidding me? For sure. Like, bro, just send me your I, Monero I, address. I could have I mean, just I, sent you I'm Monero. Like, <laughs> the other guys, like, I I don't know enough about lightning to just like that was after paying $8 or whatever. Fees. But like when when initially looking into it, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, lightning's got a lot of like. People are trying to build a lot of stuff on it, whatever. It was like kind of just like a mind fuck in a way. There was like just so much to choose from in terms of wallets. And like the setup looked like I had to do so much work just to set up the ability to send people money and receive stuff. And stuff. I'm like, I don't feel like doing that right now. It would Monero, it's just, I just send you the coin and you get it. You don't have to be online. I don't have to create a connection with you. I don't have to start any of this stuff. It just works. It's like, yep, you've got my I sub address. You can send when do you guys anytime? think uh, coin cards, you know, Monero takes the top spot here and like becomes. Next month. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday. Wow. Or this month. Technically. And I think eventually, yeah. eventually, I think, yeah, we're going to see it at like, you know, 80%. I, I don't see why not. It would be cool if coin cards, right? Because if, if you're there and you're buying a, if you're buying a gift card with crypto, I mean, you just have to be a, uh, a moron just not to use Monero. Like you just get extra benefits from it, unless you're you know you're just stuck with your, with your Bitcoin and you don't really know how to obtain Monero with it. I, I don't really know why. Uh, it'd be cool if Coin Cards built in a way to purchase, you know, kind of auto swap during your purchase, so you can purchase effectively with Monero no matter what coin you're using. Right? Wouldn't that be kind of a cool thing? It's CoinCards.com, right? Yes. Like so, even those that are that are using Bitcoin or Ethereum on the spot to to make their purchase, you could for an extra small extra fee have the payment be swapped into Monero and then made with Monero. Why would you do that though? 
So at least you're getting the obscurity of you know you're getting you're getting that have a lot of Bitcoin and they want ah. to spend it. Yeah, right. I don't think so, anyone here would do that, but. Yeah, no, not not not, not for people that are already natively using Monero, but for those like if you're gonna go spend your Bitcoin, there it on, is. the on Home Depot gift, gift card. If you had the option of auto swapping it into Monero without KYC on the spot, um, why wouldn't you do that? Right. Applicable convenience fee. Yeah, uh, that's just the card fee, right? Shortwave Surfer, because I, I think you said you use this, right? Um, I've used Coins B, but I've looked at Coins card, Coin Cards, and what it is is it's like a two and a half to five percent fee depending on the card. Yeah, I remember um, when we had um, to CEO, actually get to get the company to make money because the company's um, got to make money some way. So that's how they do it. Yeah, no, that's 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 not bad. So if you get like a five hundred dollar card, you end up paying like five ten for it or something like that. That's not too bad. Yeah, no, it's not bad at all. The common thing. The common theme that I see pop up is that where Monero is offered alongside other cryptocurrencies, it usually rises to the top. Like people tend to use Monero quite a lot, which is interesting. Um, you know, when you when you look at the relative market caps uh, of the different coins, you say, hey, why why doesn't the market cap quite reflect um, what appears to be the usage of Monero again when it's offered alongside other options? Hmm. I'm gonna reach out to Coin Cards. Tell them they should add a instant exchanger. I think you'd see people using it. I mean, if you're if you're gonna go buy a gift card with crypto, I'm assuming you you if you can, you'd want to ideally purchase it as anonymously as possible, right? Yeah, yeah. I need to actually uh, try buying something from them and see how the experience is. Um, and it looks like it's pretty good because I know we had the. Uh, I, f I keep forgetting his name. The the CEO of Coin Cards. We had him on. A while ago. Yeah, I've I've used it a bunch. We've used it a bunch of times. Uh, I guess I'd I use CakePay like a, a ton, uh, like for the mobile. I'm using CakePay mobile, super cool. I could go to the theaters with friends, and you know, I'd be like, "Hey, I'm gonna pay this with my my crypto," and I just buy the gift card right there and scan it, and it works. It's like kind of magical. Uh, so it's sad that that's not a thing anymore. Um, it might be coming back in the future, but yeah, I'm glad there's still people like Coin Cards that are uh, have a lot of options to choose from. Yeah, same. 